Hi there, Steve Kaufman. I want to uh, talk today about how we find the time to learn languages. I think this is a very important question. Thank you to the person who asked me this question here at my uh, YouTube channel. Uh, I often hear people say, I would like to learn Spanish or French, but I don't have the time. Well, uh, first of all, if it's important enough to you, you will find the time because we do find the time to do things that are important. But, but there is a legitimate concern that if a person is totally wrapped up in language learning, they can become like hermits for the other members of their family. Um, so what can we do? Well, first of all, I think the, the first thing, and I should mention that I posted on this subject at my blog, The Linguist on Language. The first thing is to recognize that, that if you can train yourself to sp devote most of your learning time to listening, just plain listening, then you can create all kinds of time for language learning. And uh, I mean, 80% of my language learning time is spent just listening. And there's a reason for that. The reason is that I can create at least an hour of time every day when I am going to and from work, when I'm doing the dishes, when I'm doing chores, if I'm sitting and waiting, standing in line, I always have a listening device with me. And the listening devices today, I mean, I happen to have a range, but here you have this little iPod shuffle. I don't know what it costs, 30, 40, 50 dollars. But there are MP3 players that cost five or 10 dollars. So everyone should be able to afford an MP3 player. Now, if you want to become more sophisticated, of course, you can go to the iPod Nano, or I happen to also have an iPod Touch. Pardon the glare. But these devices are, yeah, they're a little expensive, but they're an investment. A tremendous investment. Uh, far more powerful, to my mind, the combination of this little device and um, the internet and iTunes is more powerful than any language lab that they put into schools for the cost of twenty, thirty thousand dollars $30,000. Tremendously powerful. Well worth the investment. So, uh, but you have to... And of course, in terms of not becoming a hermit around the house, my wife doesn't mind. I should say, by the way, that we should also invest in good quality uh, listening devices. So I have, you know, this looks like a mess of spaghetti here, but, but they hang on my earlobe so they don't fall out. The sound quality is very good, and that's extremely important because when we're learning a foreign language, you need to hear well. Uh, and I have a strategy in my listening. Like when I start, I listen to the same content over and over again. Uh, and as long as the brain is being challenged, it, it will stay focused. So if, for example, you're listening and it's 5% comprehensible, it's just too much for the brain, in my opinion, so it's hard to focus. But if you're 60% comprehensible uh, input and there's always the same part that you can't get, then you're kind of motivated to keep listening. And I, uh, in the beginning, I listen often to the same content and combine it with reading and combine it with saving words and phrases from the text that I'm reading. So I'm working a little bit with the computer, but then I mostly go on and listen and listen and listen. Gradually, as I get better, uh, I don't listen so often. And then, of course, eventually graduate to where I'm listening purely for pleasure, where you can listen to audiobooks like this in French or Italian. I just grabbed a couple of examples that were nearby. And, of course, the audiobooks, you can convert them through YouTube, uh, iTunes into content that you carry around with you on your little iPod shuffle or similar device. So listening and my wife is very happy because I do the dishes, I do chores, I don't complain because I'm happy to do them. It's an opportunity to listen. So 80% listening, you can learn languages without becoming a hermit. Be careful that you don't wander around with your earphones on while your wife is talking to you. Uh, she may not go for it or your husband, whatever the case may be, partner. Uh, second thing is we all have time to read. We don't spend the whole day uh, with our partners, uh, and yes, we have obligations, social, family, professional, and so forth and so on, but we do have time to read. So get in the habit of reading in the target language. Now, that may initially be reading uh, simple books, the Teach Yourself series or whatever it might be. Um, eventually, you graduate from that, but, but I, uh, and, and also, another thing that I find useful is I always leave a grammar book, like, and a, grammar books, the smaller the grammar book, the better. And I leave one of these, or in Spanish, I happen to find uh, whatever I had handy here. I have similar 
small grammar books for the various languages. Leave them uh, by your toilet. Sorry to be vulgar, but grammar is something you want to leaf through from time to time. Or if you're going to be sitting in a doctor's office or something waiting, take a little grammar book with you. Uh, you can always leaf through the grammar book and sometimes you pick things up that, that are helpful. But there again, eventually you graduate to uh, things of interest. You know, this is in Italian. Perché leggere i classici? Um, you know, I was in Portugal. Como nasceu Portugal? Uh, I even found this thing. This is the kind of stuff you can find out there. Here is for Portuguese, Fernando Pessoa. And it's a list of, or at least a, a collection of some of the things that he has said, including, po including poetry. And it includes a CD, which I can put in and then convert to my MP3 player. Uh, we had a great go at linguistics here at the U my YouTube channel. And when I was in France, I got a, this is one of the books that I got. Le langage, nature, histoire et usage, les théories linguistiques, les débats, les origines, les enjeux. So you can get into a subject of interest, but do it in the target language. Uh, or in the case of Italian here, what do we got here? Cotto e mangiato, ricette, scuola, trucchi, de, menu. Lots of stuff on cooking in Italian. I mean, I have a few minutes, I can read a recipe. All of this is language, is exposure, uh, exposure to things that are of interest. So if you can somehow move your language learning away from something that's structured into something that's enjoyable, and you, then you're more likely to find the time. And also you can then fit it in when you've got five minutes here, 10 minutes there. Uh, at my uh, blog, I posted three links to, because I, I uh, sort of, in researching this video, I Googled finding the time uh, to learn languages. And um, I found three articles, which you can read uh, on my blog. But personally, most of the advice, I'll, I wouldn't say most, but some of the advice that they offer there, um, to my mind, is, is a little complicated. Like, I'm per as I've said before, shadowing is not something that I find that I can continue doing. Uh, you know, I think they're suggesting that you transcribe everything you hear. I'm sure these things are great. And uh, if you do them, great. Uh, but uh, if I walk out around the house shadowing, uh, you know, I think that again is starting to get a little hermity. I, I, I find I haven't got the dedicated time so that uh, I mostly listen. And then I go to my computer to do a little bit of linking to get a handle on some of the new words and phrases. Uh, but then mostly I, I, I listen and read. So I'm doing sort of normal, pre pleasurable activities. Um, I don't worry about the fact that I don't have a chance to speak. Uh, I try to speak as much as I can at link with our tutors, uh, but I can't spend the day speaking. Uh, it's a little more difficult to organize the speaking, whereas if I've got five minutes, I can just listen. Or if I'm going to go for a run, I can just listen. Or if I have 10 minutes, I sit down, I can leaf through a grammar book. Or if I'm enjoying uh, a novel like uh, the other day or the other earlier in the year when we were in Spain, uh, visiting in Segovia and Madrid. And then I read a novel that I bought locally called La Casa de los Siete Pecados. Uh, so that I like to do things that are enjoyable, that keeps me going. So I'm really converting some of my leisure time into language learning time. And so then essentially to my mind, it all comes down to what do you think is important? If you think it is important to learn languages or the language you're working on, you will find the time. And especially if the activities that uh, you are engaged in are largely enjoyable activities, all the more so. So that, uh, well, what is the French expression? Joindre l'utile à l'agréable. So you're doing things that are both useful and agreeable, and hopefully not in such a way that you are disrupting your other family, social, and professional relationships. Okay, thank you for listening. Bye for now.